Hi everyone. In today's video, I'm going to be uh, introducing all the topics which are going to be covering in the next videos uh, regarding uh, all the code or all the implementation which we're going to work on the detector app itself. So if you remember well, in the last video, I mentioned that we would be focusing mostly on the detector app right now to make it production ready. So I have written here some requirements for us uh, to understand or like my requirements in that case uh, to make this production ready, this detector app production ready. So I have added some requirements and then I also added the steps, the, the steps to implement, which most probably each one of them is going to become a video. It may be that if it gets too big, I split into two, but that, that should be ideally one video per, per step. But let's go through the requirements first. So uh, the, detect the detector must uh, keep functioning in case of network outage. Uh, this just for you to, to try to visualize. Imagine that there's an, uh, um, like a, a very a very place which is very far away from the city, and the internet's not really stable, and then internet may be just off from time to time. So we would expect this detector to be running, to be functioning, and to be making detections even in cases like that, even if the network's not running, it's not it's not online, it's not working. So um, here I have more details like what we are going to do. In general, like uh, the, so, the data must be persisted and eventually, ev eventually sent to the server. Another important point is that we need to have improved detection throughput. So, if you check the way we implement it right now, every uh, every detection is sent directly uh, right away to the to the API. And this this is good because if you look if you're looking for like a real time or close to real time. Uh, uh, detection that's good because then you're doing one by one like in the streaming process uh, not in stream process but it means that you're treating one event uh, individually uh, they are not bound to each other uh, but here the most important thing is that we have a high throughput especially because as I mentioned the other example for example um, we have we may have uh, like a machine with like two lanes or one lane which is in, a, in, in an area which doesn't have a good network right because Maybe a rural, like a like a countryside thing, which the internet's not very good. It may be like a radio internet or whatever. Internet's not good, so we want to have a true, like a high throughput, so we can use the best from the internet itself. Um, so we want what? How are we going to, to achieve this? We are going to do to implement batch requests. So we are going to send one request with multiple detections, and we are also going to implement compression of the data that's going to be sent in the request. Another thing is the possibility to change some equipment configurations through the server. So you'll be able to, we should be able to enable and disable lane. So let's imagine that you have two lanes, right? And uh, for some reason there is some construction work and one of the lanes should be disabled, like for a week. So there should be this possibility for us to, to go th uh, through the server and enable or disable a specific lane from this equipment. That's like just for us to have the this implementation, like we could have like more useful uh, changes, but just for us to have this solution of implementing like enabling disable and having this uh, this change applied into into the into the, the app itself from the API. Another thing is that uh, detectors uh, health must be monitored. So what happens if the detector stop to run by a bug or hardware issue, for example? So this needs to to be uh, visible from the API side. Um, another thing, security. So we are going to be using like simple, very simple solution here. We are not going to use. We could use like some extra, for example, using some key cloak or something like that to have like open ID uh, solution. But I've, I want to go really simple here. So we're just going to have a token generation using GWS, which is signed GWT, and we are also going to implement uh, to have some very basic implementations to protect against DDoS or DOS. That's a denial of service. Or distributed denials of service using rate limiters. This is something which we are going to implement on the API itself. And we are also we need to have some documentation. So I want to have some diagrams and simple simple documentation on how the application works. So for new engineers which would come and they, they have an idea about how the application works, right? So what the application does uh, and what how it works. And also very important, uh, I want to have like some documentation on how to operate the application, how to set up a new equipment, for example, this kind of, uh, and also I haven't added here, but like what if there's a problem, right, with this, with this equipment, how to fix that. 
so the steps to implement those uh, those those requirements. So first, we are going to, to start with refactoring. Uh, so we are going to refactor the, the detector code. We are going to use some methods from the thread itself. The code is quite complex right now. It's kind of not a bit useless. There are some things which, which we can optimize. That's what the first thing we are going to do and improve the tests. The tests the test coverage is really bad right now. So we need to, to improve that as well. We are going to do this in the next video. Uh, another thing is to stop sending the detections, persist them in a local queue. So we are going to, that's the solution which I, I opted, I selected for us to do. So we are going to use like a local queue, which is based on a file. Uh, so we are going to basically persist, because if you may, if you remember about it, so for every equipment there is going to be a machine, there will be a computer running there. It could be like a Raspberry Pi, it doesn't matter. It's a, there's a machine working there, there will be a, a hard drive and we we can have like persistent we are going to have a persistent uh, storage there so we are going to keep like a local queue which is based on the file and we are going to basically on every detection we are going to to to, to put or to add this uh this detection inside the queue itself so this next next one next step is send all the messages not but send messages a list of messages from the queue in a batch uh, handle the batch request in the api then we are going to add the compression of the request and handle the compression the compressed request in the API. Then we implement the authentication authorization on the API side, do the same on the app side. Then we implement the rate limiter in the API. We implement the app's heart, heartbeat uh, in the API in the app itself. So that's the way that's the way we are going to, to tell from the app uh, like to the API how like if 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 there's if this is alive or not there's the the heartbeat implementation then we are going to also add uh, to document the app design which is going to be an, uh, the the documentation is going to be integrated with our code base so we are going to write the documentation inside the code base itself so we don't keep documenting this on like um, I know external tools and we keep this uh, up to date so it's easier for us to keep this up to date and last but not least, we are going to also create the app's runbook. So runbook, if you Google it, just look for um, what is a runbook. You're going to see what it means, but basically it's a way for us, the tech, very technical documentation which tells us how a service, how an API, how an app, whatever, or cloud, whatever, how this works uh, in the sense of like, what, what should I expect? Like, which kind of errors can I have? How to react to those, to those errors, how to fix those errors? How can I work? So how can I run this application? How can I monitor? How can I ensure that things going to be running? If there's a problem, how to react to it? That's in general terms, but we can go through it on the video. And one thing which I forgot, because I mentioned that here, that's the change. So we are also going to change, um, basically we are going to have after the, before the authentication, we are going to have here uh, endpoint, to change or to enable disable uh, lane lane inside API and we are going to uh, propagate uh, changes from the API to the app That's basically what we're going to do. Okay, so I'm pretty excited. I hope you are also too. So um, hope you're, I hope I hope you are you are too. And for the next the next video, we are going to start with the first step, which is going to be refactor detector code and you, like using thread methods and and doing some more tests. That's it uh, for now. So I hope you liked it. I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.